It is so good to be in God's presence today. What a blessing to have another opportunity to come together and worship our Lord and our Savior. Wherever you're gathered, wherever you find yourself today, with a cup of coffee or without, it's a good day to be serving God. God has called us, he has allowed us, and we are doing his will. Let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. And so as we begin our 69th church anniversary celebration this morning, I want to read from the 100th number of Psalms. Psalm 100, and it reads thusly, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his sheep. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Oh 
Amen. We always want to go in prayer for those who are under the weather, those who need healing and restoration, those who just need our prayers. And so as we go into prayer this morning, I want us to not only pray for the names that I'm going to call, but pray for those names that you know of that are not listed anywhere on our program, but that you specifically know of. Amen? Amen. 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 I want us to be in prayer for uh, Brother James Wyatt. He spent a little time in the hospital, and now he's at Bishop Spencer uh, recouping. Uh, pray for the family of Dwayne Thomas, who is uh, a former member here and was funeralized on yesterday, the brother of Sister Teresa Thomas Campbell and the cousin of Deacon Warren and Sister Margie Warren. Pray for Sister Kim and Michaela McIntosh. Continue to lift up the family of Sister Shonda Kelso Williams. Uh, be in prayer for Sister Jean Watts, who is at home. I want to specifically be in prayer for our Brother Caldwell, who is at the VA Med Center with the COVID virus and is unresponsive at this time. So be deeply in prayer for that family. And on yesterday, we got news that uh, Brother Courtney and Brother Keaton Mays lost their father. So we want to be in prayer for all of those people, all of those names. And be in prayer not only for uh, those, again, those names that have been called, but be in prayer for uh, your pastor and family as well. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to read from the 27th number of Psalm, Psalm 27, and then we'll go into prayer. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Heavenly Father, we come again this morning with bowed heads, humbled hearts, recognizing that we have this opportunity to come before you today. And Lord, we come knowing that we have not done all that we should do. But Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. Lord, just forgive us of our sins. Allow us another opportunity. Father God, look beyond our faults and minister to our various needs. Lord, there are those whose names we call who are suffering bereavement. Lord, we pray that you would touch those families, touch those loved ones, Help them, Lord, as they go through the grieving process. Lord, we pray that you would fill that void with your love, your grace, and your mercy. And Lord, as we come praying, we pray for those who 
are suffering from this debilitating virus. And Lord, we understand that things have changed for us. Things have changed so much it seems oftentimes that we are on sinking sand. But Lord, we thank you for being a foundation. We thank you for being a rock. For when everything else changes, my God stays the same. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so, Lord, we just pray for those families. Lord, we pray for our church as we celebrate this 69th anniversary. Lord, we're asking that you would allow us to continue to celebrate your holy and righteous name. Help us, Lord, that we might take this gospel message to a dying world, that men, women, boys, and girls might know there's a true and a living Savior. Thank you for never leaving us. Thank you for never forsaking us. Thank you for protecting and providing for us. It's only in you, O oh Lord, that we find our strength, that we find our comfort, that we find our solace. Lord, thank you for delivering us from all evil. And Lord, we just come to lift up your name. Lift up your holy and righteous name, O oh Lord. There's no other name we know. No other name that can keep us when we cannot keep ourselves. No other name that can show us the way. It's in you, O oh Lord, and you alone. Father, we thank you. Thank you for looking beyond our faults. Thank you for blessing us because we stand in need of a blessing. Lord, thank you for blessing us on yesterday. Thank you for blessing us in days gone by. But oh Lord, I just want to thank you for right now. Thank you for the blessing of right now, the ability to open my eyes, to breathe your air, to see myself and to recognize who I am. I just want to say thank you, Lord. You've been mighty good. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Guide and direct us. Lead us. Lead us, Lord, in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. And we bring all of our cares all of our petitions, all of our concerns before thee this one more time. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The one who traveled through 40 and two generations. The one who walked these old dusty roads to give us Salvation, the one who showed us how we ought to treat one another, is in Jesus' name. The lily of the valley, Jesus. The bright and the morning star, Jesus. That no other name, Jesus. It's in his name we do pray today. And all of God's people said amen. 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 Oh 
preaching moment. And Lord, we pray that you would move this preacher out of the way, but allow your word to come forward. <clears throat> Father, use your spirit in this place on this day. Father, we thank you for 
blessing us to see another day. Yes. Guide us and direct us as we enter into your word. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. I would that you would go with me to Old Testament book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 4. Joshua chapter 4. And I'd like to read in your hearing verses 19, 20, and 21. Joshua chapter 4, 19, 20, and 21. And it reads thusly. And the people came up out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month and encamped in Gilgal in the east border of Jericho. And those 12 stones which they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. And he spake unto the children of Israel saying, when your children shall come ask their fathers in time to come saying, what mean these stones? Then ye shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you were passed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us until we were gone over that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord that it is mighty that ye might fear the Lord your God forever thus ends the reading of God's word can we say amen, amen. if I could for just a few moments today I'd like to talk from the subject what do these stones mean? What do these stones mean? We gathered this morning to celebrate our 69th church anniversary of the Fellowship Baptist Church of Kansas City, Missouri. It's a time to commemorate God's grace. It's a time to commemorate God's mercy. It's a time to get excited about what God has done in and through this church. It's a time for us to give gratitude for God allowing us another opportunity to gather in his name. It's another opportunity for us to give God glory, praise, and honor. Amen. Going all the way back to 1951 when a few of folks gathered together to organize another church. And since the beginning of that time, all the way through Reverend Wormley, Reverend Warren, Reverend Watson, we've been moving from location to location and continuing even unto this day to lift up the holy and righteous name of our God. This is an institution that has spent its time spreading the good news, the word of God sowing eternal seed not only into the people in the church but into the community as well. And you know that's something that never goes out of style. Fashion changes. People change. There are so many things that change around us but our God never changes. And so this calling that he's given us, this work that he's allowed us to do, this calling that we, this mission that we have is because he's allowed us to do it. And it never goes out of style. In this Joshua text, in this early book, 
in these early chapters of this Joshua book. This new leader has informed the children of Israel that within three days we're going to pass over this river Jordan and go in and possess the land which the Lord your God has given you. That's in that first chapter. And so Joshua is leading the children of Israel who have been in the wilderness. Now they're getting ready to go into the promised land. And if we look at this group of people, here's some things we would recognize. This is a nomadic people. They've been wandering in the wilderness some 40 years. No permanent home. No place to settle down. Now watch this. And when they worshipped, they didn't worship in temples nor in churches, but they was outside in a tent, in a tabernacle, if you will. And so sometimes we ought not get too excited about the fact that we can't get into a permanent edifice. Sometimes we shouldn't get excited about the fact that we might be stuck at home. We ought to be able to worship God wherever we are. He's been allowing this congregation 69 good years. And I'm praying for 69 more. And so here's this nomadic people that did not worship in churches about to cross this river Jordan just like their forefathers crossed the Red Sea. And in getting them ready, God gave them instructions. And so Joshua tells them, Take 12 men, one from each tribe, and when the priests carry the Ark of the Covenant, and when they move into the Jordan River, and the river stops, I want you to take 12 stones. One for each tribe, one man to carry one stone, and watch this, and carry it on your shoulders. So he's not saying pick up a pebble. Not saying pick up a little rock. He's giving us something that has some weight. And so when the priests enter into the water, we're going to see these men pick up these stones. And he says, when you get those stones, Take them over to the other side. And I want you to place them where you rest tonight, where you lodge tonight. A couple of things. I want you to see what God's doing here. God is showing us his children, Israel. But God is also showing us how he is directly supporting Joshua, just like he directly supported Moses. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, he says, I want you to be strong and courageous. In fact, I want you to be very courageous so that you can keep this testament. And so the people will see that I am with you as I was with Moses. And so we see Joshua tell the people. And then we get to these verses that we read beginning in verse 29. And the people came up out of Jordan on that 10th day of the first month. And those 12 stones which they took out of the Jordan did Joshua pitch at Gilgal. And so they took those stones and they placed them where they lay that night. But then it goes on to say, when your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, what do these stones mean? Leads us into several observations. First thing I want you to notice is these stones are distinctive. These stones are different. They are large stones taken out of the riverbed. Large enough that they had to be carried on the shoulders. These stones will begin to stand out from the other terrain where they laid them. River rock looks different than rock that's not been in the river. And so these stones are going to look different than the rocks around them. And these stones are significant. 
and the stones are so distinctive that they would be noticed by somebody passing by. Watch this. Because if the children are going to ask, what do these stones mean? That means we're going to pass this way again. We've got to come back by these stones for somebody to see and for the children to know and to ask. These are distinctive stones and they were pulled out of the river while the Ark of the Covenant was still in the river. The stones were taken while the presence of God was still in the midst of us. And sometimes we ought to recognize that each one of us has a load that we have to carry. There are some stones that we carry even today. Different kinds of stones. And our stones are distinctive because God gave them to us while his presence was still with us. Somebody in here knows something about carrying a heavy load. Somebody knows something about staying awake late at night. Somebody knows how, how to make their way through when it doesn't look like God's going to allow you to make it through. Some of us understand and recognize that God has navigated us. And watch this. There's even a designated group within us to have to carry the stones. Joshua told them to take one man from every tribe. There's somebody in every family that has to carry that weight. Somebody's got to carry that weight. We've been designated to carry that weight. Now don't carry the weight all by yourself, all alone. Carry that weight up out of the riverbed and set it down where God told you to set it down. Amen? Amen. Second thing I want you to notice out of this text. The children will ask. There's a demand that the children will make. The text says, when your children ask, what do these stones mean? Watch the text now. It doesn't say, if they ask. It says, when they ask. We recognize and we ought to know that children are inquisitive. They want to know. They will question. And when they ask some questions, it would be good for us to have an answer. So many of us grew up on this answer right here. Because I said so. <laughs> Didn't really matter what the question was. The answer always seemed to be because I said so. Do as I say, not as I do. And so when the children ask, when they question, there's going to be some important things that we need to remember to tell the children. First thing I want you to know is that we have a history. See, just like the children of Israel, we came from somewhere. We didn't just arrive on scene. See, God delivered them out of Egypt and then allowed them to walk in the wilderness for 40 years. And so they came from somewhere to get to that river Jordan. They didn't just show up at the Jordan one day. God led them. And so God has given us a history. We've been through some struggles. We've been through some trials and some tribulations. We've been through some desert experiences. We know how to handle the wilderness. We know what adversity looks like. And even in all of that, God kept us. He's kept us. He's allowed us to make it. Somehow we survived all of those conditions. Because we have a history and we have a proud history. He didn't bring us this far just to leave us. So we've seen hard times. We, we understand our significance. We have a history. And see, we also know that our living has not been in vain. 
then my living has not been in vain. And so we have a history, but if we have a history, if we came from somewhere, we also have a destiny. We're going somewhere. We understand and know what a nomadic people looks like, but God has allowed us to plant ourselves, to put down roots. We've been 69 years to fellowship Baptist Church. Have families and children and raising children. And that ought to be somebody's point right there. We shouldn't just have children, but we ought to raise children. There's a difference. And I'm not going to stray into what raising children ought to look like. Ask your grandmama. <laughs> and so when we see these stones, we know that the children's got to see those stones because we're going to pass this way again. And they will ask. They can't ask if you're not around. They can't ask if we don't have a destiny. If we're going to get to our destiny, hear me now, if we're going to get to our destiny, we have to stop sacrificing our children to this senseless violence. Mm. Here in our city and all across our land and country, we are people who cannot make it without our children. The children will ask and the question remains, what do these stones mean? Not why are the stones here, as if they're out of place, but what do they mean? And our stones ought to have some meaning, they ought to have some relevance, they ought to have some significance, they ought to have some function, they ought to be some markers in our lives that the children can see. Watch this, there ought to be some for us individually because the stones represent what we are as a people. They ought to, ought to already know what we are individually, but here's an opportunity to, for us to share as a people. What are we going to pass along? Well, before we can pass something along, we got to know something. So somebody has to survive all of those hard years to tell the kids what it was like. If we don't know anything, we can't pass anything along. Do you have any stones in your life? Where did you pitch your stones? See, I pray that the Fellowship Baptist Church serves as a place that can be a stone in somebody's life. But not only are these stones distinctive, not only uh, will the children demand, will they ask, but I want you to know that God is going to do his deeds. The deeds of God, and watch this, watch what the text says. The Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan until ye were passed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea. God is in the business of doing miracles. God is in the business of doing miracles. His mighty acts, his wondrous power is always on display. God did a miracle for the children of Israel right there at the river Jordan. And he'll do miracles again even today. Joshua told the people in that third chapter, sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourselves because the Lord is getting ready to do wonders. And so what you've seen today, you'll never see again. And we have seen God work miracles in our own personal lives. Individually, we ought to be able to point to some things where God brought us out. When the doctor gave up, and God brought us out anyhow. When the money was funny, and God brought us out anyhow. He made a way out of no way. He opened doors when there were no doors to be opened. And watch this. He did it for Fellowship Baptist Church as well. He moved water. He placed stones. But we got to tell our children. So that our children can tell our children's children. Because we have a destiny. God serves us and God has done some mighty acts in our lives. 
Watch this. God is in the miracle working business. And he does a miracle at the Jordan. But he also did a miracle at the Red Sea. Deuteronomy 6, they, they get to the other side of the Red Sea and they ask the same question. Tell your children what these stones mean. And so we set up these memorials. And watch this. We set up these memorials not as statues, not as temples, but as a place where we can say God kept us. They didn't hew the stone out. They didn't make an a, a, a image of any kind. They just had the stones. Because if we'd have cut it into an eagle, and marked them stones into an eagle, we'd have said that, that we had something to do or the eagle had something to do with saving us. If we'd have made any kind of a graven image, we'd have said that that image had something to do with saving us. But we just got some plain old rocks that are now distinctive. They started out ordinary, but God has done something extraordinary with them. You ought to be able to see in your own life that you've done some ordinary stuff, and God has taken that and done some extraordinary things with it. He is a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. And he is in the business of doing miracles. And each time, here in this Old Testament story, he did a miracle, there was a transition. Watch this. Children were enslaved in Egypt 400 years. And God took them across the Red Sea. He did that miracle. But there was a transition phase. They went from slavery into the wilderness. And the wilderness time was there to prepare them for going into the promised land. And so when they got ready to go into the promised land, there's another transition and God does another miracle. All right. I say that because some people seem to think that all the miracles in the Old Testament, yeah. all the miracles have already been done. Yeah. When you got up this morning, that was a miracle. When you brushed your teeth yeah. or you put them in, that was a miracle. <laughs> God is still able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever ask or imagine. Our problem is I think we are so accustomed to seeing God's miracles that we get complacent and we don't recognize a miracle when we see it. And I also believe that we're in a time of transition. See, in the, in, the, in, the, in the 1900s all the way up to 2000, we had that civil rights era, and, 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 and we fought our way through that and all of those kinds of things. And now that we've gotten into the 2000s, God is doing something different. And if you haven't noticed, in 2020, God is doing something completely different. If he hadn't gotten your attention, I don't think you're alive. And so if we're going to reach our destiny, we've got to recognize that God is still in the miracle working business and God still does miracles. And watch this, it says, all these miracles are done so that everybody else can see. Look at verse 24, 424. That all the people of the earth might know the Lord that he is mighty, that ye might fear the Lord, your God, forever. These stones mean that God kept us. These stones mean that God brought us from a mighty long way. We ought to have some places, some stopping points in our lives that we can tell those who come behind us, this is how God blessed us along the way. This is how God kept us along the way. This is what God has done in our lives because he's a mighty God. And let me close with this story right here. Somewhere in scripture there's a story of a woman. She's going to minister to a deceased friend of hers when her and several other women arrive at the place where this deceased individual ought to be, 
they found that the stone was rolled away. They were going down looking and trying to decide what they were going to do about this stone in their life. And when they got there, the stone was already rolled away. So what does that stone mean if it's been rolled away? It means God got up. Got up with all power in his hands. He got up. He is risen. And if he got up, you can get up. And because he got up, I can get up. We can all get up. God has already rolled the stone away. And so we need to recognize that stones are being rolled away in our lives. And so, can you still go back to the place where God did a miracle in your life? Or maybe you haven't reached that place yet. Maybe you've been wandering in, in, in many transitions, not really knowing what's going on in your life. And now is the time that you need to know that God is real and he'll do a miracle in your life. Jesus is performing miracles today. He's asking you to step out of the ordinary and into the extraordinary. Take those ordinary things and allow him to do something with them. Allow him to save your soul. What do these stones mean? They mean that everybody else can see God's children and they know that God has kept them. See, when you get back into this book of Joshua and you start to read this for yourself in the ch third chapter, you'll see that Joshua sent out spies over to Jericho. And when he sent those spies to Jericho, the, the king found out that they were there. And so they hid with a harlot named Rahab. And Rahab says, I know that your God has already given this land to you. And I know that the rest of this country fears you because of what your God has already done. See, people ought to be able to look at the children of God and know that God has already done something in your life and be ashamed to mess with you. They ought to have fear to mess with you because you're a child of the living God. So people ought to have some fear of the God we serve so that everyone, the entire world will know, the whole earth might know and see the mighty hand of God. And we can see God at work right now here in this land, in this country. And because God is at work, we need to be at work as well. So when the children ask, because they will ask, what do these stones mean? What were y'all doing at Fellowship Baptist Church for 69 years? We was praising God, but we was also sowing seed into the community and into the lives of people around. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. He's an awesome God. He's an amazing God. Omnipotent God. And maybe you need to give your life to God today. He's been working in the lives of so many for so long. But he wants to work in your life. He wants to change what's going on with you right now. Wherever you are, get in touch with us on Facebook, through our phone number at the church. Doesn't really matter. Use our website, whatever it takes. Because I need for you to be saved. I need for you to be sanctified. I need for you to know him for yourself. Because in the end, it's not good enough to, for mom and daddy to know what these stones mean. But the children must know. And you've got to know for yourself. Can we say amen? Amen. Amen. amen? amen. Just before they come, I want us to pray. Stand wherever you are. At home. If you're in your car, pull over. Get out. Stand up. Stand wherever you are. And let us go in prayer. 
Heavenly Father, you know we're in a period of transition. Mm -hmm. And while we're in these turbulent times, mm -hmm. we cannot see the miracle that is being wrought right now, but Lord, you know. And so as we do all that we can, as long as we can, Lord, we're asking that you would guide us, protect us, preserve us. And Lord, in this spiritual warfare, we're asking that you would give us strength, gird us about. Help us to stand tall. Help us to stand mighty. Help us to stand on the foundation of your word. Tell a dying world there's a true and a living Savior. Lord, you know what we're up against even when we cannot articulate it. Lord, we're asking, begging, pleading that you would intervene, step in and make a difference, change what's going on. Because from our eyes, it doesn't look good. But thanks be to God, you don't have our perspective. You're a God that sits high and looks low. And nothing surprises you. Nothing has happened outside your permissive will. Lord, we ask me that you would take control and be with us as you were with Moses. Be with us as you've been with Joshua. Be with us, oh Lord, that we might fail a dying world. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.